Good afternoon and welcome to Growth Club to this webinar and let's see who we've got on board already. Hannah, good afternoon to you. Hannah, Pete, good afternoon to you. Uh, Charlie, good afternoon to you as well. How are you all doing this afternoon? Uh, do you want to put just something in the chat box or the Q&A box just to let us know that you can hear me okay? Good, glad to hear it. Thanks, Hannah. Thanks, Pete. And can you all see the screen okay? Good stuff. Well, we're going to hang on for one or two minutes just to allow a few other people to join in the uh, the webinar. Glad to hear that you can all see us okay and uh, that you can see the screen and hear me okay. Uh, what I'd like you to do, if you can, just for a second, is in the Q&A, uh, section. Uh, this is all about Growth Club and about 90 day planning for your business for the next 90 days. So in the Q&A box, what I'd like you to do is just put in, just have a think about your biggest challenges in your business um, over the last quarter and uh, stick a little note in the Q&A box about what you feel is your biggest challenge in your business over the last, uh, over the last 90 days or so. So if you can all do that now for me, just while we're waiting for a couple of other people to join in the, uh, the webinar and then we'll get cracking. So if you've got, uh, if you can just stick in the Q&A box, the question and answer box, you should be able to see that in the, uh, in the middle of your, uh, in the middle of your panel there. Uh, if you can stick in the Q&A box, what your biggest challenge of the business is, uh, biggest challenge in your business has been over the last, over the last quarter or so. A uh, few more people have joined the uh, the webinar now, so welcome to you guys. Um, hi, Paul. How are you doing? Hope you can hear us okay. Um, if you can just uh, put a little quick note in the uh, chat box just to let us know you can hear us or in the Q&A box uh, so you can see the screen and you can hear me okay. That'd be great. Thank you. We've had a first challenge uh, over the last quarter and that's time. Um, you should have a little uh, button where you can stick your hands up um, in there. So oh, we've got somebody else come in and said time management as well. So um, for everybody else who's on the call, is time an, an issue for you guys as well? Are you on the hamster wheel of business? Never enough time to plan, never enough time to do the things you need to do to grow your business. Somebody else has said cash flow. Money coming in and money going out. We're just going to wait one more minute. We've got a couple of more people just trying to get onto the call. They keep popping in and popping out again and then we'll start. Okay, so I think um, we've given everybody enough time now to drop, on, drop onto the call, so let's get started. Um, this webinar is called Growth Club. Growth Club is a 90-day planning session that we have for our clients within uh, Action Coach, and it's a non-negotiable for all of our Action Coach clients. Uh, everybody's got to do 90-day planning. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you an overview of, of Growth Club, what that's all about, give you some hints and tips on how you can start thinking about planning in your business. Um, and 
by the end of the session, you'll have something that you can take away and you'll know whether you think Growth Club is something that you want to come along to. And we've got a special offer for everybody um, at the end of this webinar if you are interested in coming along to our 90, next 90 day planning session, which is on uh, Friday the 13th of December. Yeah, I know it's Friday the 13th, but we couldn't help that. Um, so let's tell you, start off by telling you a little bit about me and why I do what I do. Uh, we'll go through some of the reasons why you need to plan. Um, we'll talk about what goes on in Growth Club. Um, and if we have time, we'll talk about, if we have time, uh, time management and uh, a little bit about cash flow. So who am I? Who's heard of, uh, we've got a hands up um, button on the uh, dashboard there. Who's heard of Action Coach before? If you can just stick your hands up, that'd be great. You all have. The marketing's obviously working. Okay, if you can, I'll stick your hands down again. So, who's met me before? Uh, some of you have heard. Some of you have met me before as well. Some of you haven't. Okay, that's great. Lovely. Just so I know who I'm talking to. So this is me. I hate that picture with a passion. I'm going to have to get it changed, but um, uh, not just yet. So I've been coaching for over 30 years. First of all, in a high-pressure sports environment. Um, I was a, a skydiving instructor and a formation skydiving coach. Uh, you'll have to take my word for it, but that chap in the blue helmet in the middle of that formation is actually me. Um, so I'd take people like you on a Saturday morning and by Saturday tea time convince them that it was perfectly reasonable to throw themselves out of an aeroplane at two and a half thousand feet and survive. And then with more experienced skydivers like the guys you see uh, in that picture, three or four of us would go up to 10 or 12,000 feet and jump out the back of the aeroplane. And while we were plunging and plummeting towards the earth at 200 feet a second, uh, I'd coach them using hand signals. So you no need to worry. I'm not going to ask any of you guys to do that. You'd be glad to hear. Um, I've been in sales and marketing all my adult life, first of all in the publishing industry and then in the commercial interiors industry. Um, ended up working for a Fortune 500 company, a global corporation, as the sales manager for their global and multinational accounts team. Left there, moved to a local company in Bolton because I was fed up with being away from home four or five nights a week. Um, and ended up pulling a division of that company out, a loss making division of that company. Um, and we turned it from a loss making to a profit making company. Um, from 750,000 to 1.4 million pounds turnover in the space of, of three years with 12 members of staff. Um, I left there a couple of years ago, formed a consultancy and training company, and now we operate under the Action Coach brand. I'm a business coach, uh, a mentor and trainer. Um, now, for those who, who maybe don't know Action Coach so well, Action Coach have been around for 26 years. Uh, we've got over a thousand coaches in 88 countries around the world. Um, and the systems and strategies that we use within Action Coach with our clients uh, have been tried and tested over that time with over half a million business owners. So we know they work. We know they work and we know they work so well that we guarantee what we do. So any of our clients, uh, we guarantee that we get a return on the investment we're making. So otherwise I'll get my checkbook out and I'll write a check out for the difference. So um, who makes mistakes in business? Um, stick your hands up if you make mistakes from time to time. Uh, one or two have put their hands up, one or two have been a bit hesitant. Uh, so yeah, we all make mistakes, but making mistakes isn't failure, is it? You know, if you look at Thomas Edison, he tried 9,999 times before he managed to make the nut light bulb. Um, and if he'd have given up at that point, he'd, he'd never have made the light bulb. Somebody else would have got around to it in the end. Um, and his assistant famously asked him why he kept trying and failing um, to do what he wanted to do. And Edison said to him, I haven't failed. I've just found 9,999 times ways not to make a light bulb. So it, it's not making mistakes. And, and uh, I've asked one or two entrepreneurs about why they're so successful at what they do. And invariably, they'll say it, one of the reasons is because I've made more mistakes than anybody else. Um, keep making mistakes, you learn from them, don't you? So um, the only real failure um, is the failure to participate. Give 100% and you'll get 100%. And with that in mind, you've got a question box there. So if at any point you want to put uh, a question in the question box, uh, we'll try and answer those as we're going along uh, in this session. If it's something that we can't get around to in the 45, 50 minutes or so that we've got left, then I will definitely make sure that I get back to you uh, after the session with a response. So uh, let's move on from there. Uh, 
So, um, what's the biggest, uh, what are the most dangerous two words in business, do you think? If anybody wants to hazard a guess, put it in the Q&A box. What do you think are the most dangerous two words in business? Anybody want to hazard a guess? Nobody's, nobody's responding. Well, let me tell you, the two most dangerous words in business are I know. If anybody's got teenage kids, they'll know that um, if the teenage kids, you know, if, they're, if you're having a go at your teenage kids, they'll sit there going, Mom, Dad, I know, I know, shut up, I know. And it's the same with business owners. No, none of what we do here is brand new. None of what we do is rocket science. Uh, it's all out there. We just try and put it in a format that helps people. So if you hear yourself saying, I know, uh, I know this, and folding your arms and sitting there going, yeah, I know, I know, I know. What I want you to do is stop yourself. Because all it's like pressing the remote control on your car and the wing mirrors folding back over your ears. You just you stop listening when you say I know and you stop learning. So don't say I know, just say, isn't that interesting? Ask a question. Write it down, think about it, challenge it if you want to. But don't say I know, say isn't that interesting? Uh, the one thing I will never be as a coach is nice. Um, we are kind, but we're challenging because nice means nothing inside me cares enough. Um, so if you ever do have a coach or if you come to Growth Club, sometimes you will get challenged on some of the things that you say. Uh, one of the main reasons that uh, business owners uh, have challenges in the business from time to time is the limiting beliefs that they have. So my job as a coach is to help you with those and um, to challenge you on there. And if I'm just being nice, then I'll let you get away with things and I'll let you get away with stuff. So I'll be kind, but I won't necessarily be nice. Hope that makes sense to everybody. So um, let's see if anybody's heard this phrase. Give a person a fish and you feed them for a day. Who knows the second part of that? Somebody stick, a, stick in the Q&A box what the, what the second part of this is. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Teach a person to fish and you feed them for a lifetime. So the reason that we say this is, um, the reason that we say this is quite simple. I'm not going to give you any fish. I'm not going to, I'm not a consultant. I don't come into your business and do work on your behalf. My job as a coach is to teach you what you need to know as a business owner to allow you to become a better business owner. Uh, to go on and do great things with your business. So I'm the person who teaches you to fish and then you can feed yourself for a lifetime. Uh, hopefully from this session you'll get some BFOs. Uh, BFOs are uh, blinding flashes of the obvious. As I said before, nothing in this is new. Nothing in this is, is rocket science. Um, so make sure you've got a pad and a pen at the side of you uh, and you can take some notes around what we're doing. So what I want to talk to you about is why we plan and why we, why we, why we have goals. Um, so there's been a survey done by Harvard Business School um, and the survey showed that 70% of the business owners that they surveyed had absolutely no written and no verbal goals or plans. They hadn't verbalized anything to anybody. Um, and I find that incredible. 70% of all business owners have no written and no verbal goals or plans. There's a smaller percentage, around about 27%, who have verbal goals. They don't actually write anything down, but they have actually told somebody or told their ma management team or told members of staff that they've actually got some goals, but not written them down anywhere. The, that only leaves 3% of business owners. 3% of all the business owners out there who have surveyed have written goals. And these written goals are ones that they'll put up on the walls in their offices for all to see. So they can see them. They don't just write them and then put them in a drawer. They write them, put them onto a graph, put them onto the wall so they can see them and refer back to them. And everybody else in the business can see them as well. So why is having written goals important? Well, it's for this reason. 98% of the wealth in business accounts, it comes from those 3% who have those written goals. 98% of the wealth in business comes from the 3% of people who have written goals that are visible for all to see. So what does that tell you about whether or not you need to write some goals for your business? 
Now, I want to talk to you very briefly about something called the, your reticular activating system. It's a part of the brain that sits at the back of the brain. It's about three inches long, um, and it helps you when you're setting goals. Um, your reticular activating system is the compass for your brain. Uh, and when you set goals, you set that compass. Now, what I mean by this, what I mean by it's the compass for your brain, um, have you ever decided to buy a new car and you've chosen a colour for that car? So if you like, I bought a new blue Volkswagen Tiguan a couple of years ago. I'd never seen any blue Volkswagen Tiguans on the road before I decided that that was what I was going to buy. Amazingly enough, once I'd bought the car and it was on order and it was just about to come, it felt like every other car on the road I saw was a blue Volkswagen Tiguan. Now, how does that happen? Well, it's your reticular, retic it's easy for me to say, isn't it? Your reticular activating system um, is now focused on that blue tick one, and that's why you start, start seeing them. And it's the same with goals. If you set really clear goals, then your RAS, your RAS, your reticular activating system is set. It's the compass for your brain. When you start those goals off, um, you get focused on them and your RAS helps you to start looking at them and start achieving them. There's three specific reasons why we set goals. The first one of those is to give you direction. What's the point in having a business if you don't know where you're going? I fly as a hobby. If I take off in my aircraft and have a chart on my knee, but I haven't marked on where I'm going, how on earth am I ever going to get there? So. Goals help to give you direction. And everybody knows that in business, everything is not a straight line. You know, it'd be simple if we could mark point A and point B, draw a straight line between the two, and then business was as easy as getting from point A to point B. But we know business isn't like that. Things take us off track from time to time. So having direction, having goals will help bring you back on track. The second thing that you get from having goals is movement. Having a goal and starting off helps to give you some movement towards that end goal. And once you've got that movement, you start to build up momentum. If you don't have specific and clear goals, then you don't build up that movement and momentum. And the third reason is it shapes the person um, that you're going to become. It shapes you as a person. Having a specific goal in mind will help shape what you need to be. The classic example of that is if you had a goal um, to complete a 10K run, let's say, then you know that you'll need to do some training to get fitter to enable you to complete that 10K run. For you, it might be a marathon or an ultra marathon, an Ironman perhaps. Uh, whatever it happens to be, it shapes you as a person. And you then start thinking about the kind of things that you need to take care of to help you achieve those goals. I hope that makes sense to everybody. I want to talk to you about one of the most important things about being in business, and for us, that's called the point of power. There you go, that's the point of power. Um, we find that in business, a lot of business owners do this. They'll blame other people for what's happening in the business. They'll blame Brexit for what's happening in their business. They'll come up with excuses as to why things aren't happening. They'll say things like, you can never find good salespeople or you can never find good technicians. They might even deny that there's a problem in their business at all. And we come across this all the time with business owners. They'll blame everybody else and everything else for the things that go wrong in their business. But ultimately, if that's what you do in your business, then you don't have any power in your business to do anything. If you take the opposite side of that, which is taking ownership and accountability for what happens in your business, and becoming responsible for the actions, then you start to have some power in your business. Let's take that there's never enough good salespeople scenario. We had a business owner who couldn't find any good salespeople. And when we talked to him about it, he was blaming the, his competitors for taking all the good salespeople. He was making excuses why salespeople didn't stay with him very long and disappeared. Um, and he denied that there was any issue with any part of his recruitment process, training process or anything else. 
But when we talked to him about it and said, what's the common denominator in all of this? And he finally realized that as the business owner, he was the common denominator. And he started taking ownership of how he wrote the adverts, what kind of person he was looking for. We changed the recruitment process. We helped him to recruit better people, to motivate and train them. And he ended up with two fantastic salespeople. But it was only when he took ownership and accountability for making a change that he had the power to do something with it. So the question is, do you want to be powerless in your business or do you want to be powerful in your business by taking ownership and accountability for what's happening? Listen to yourself when you're talking about everything that's going on. If you find yourself blaming others or blaming situations or making excuses, think about what else you can do in your business to become accountable for those situations and you will become a better business owner as a result. I want to talk to you now a little bit about the formula for change and these are sort of things that we cover in more detail in, in our uh, growth club uh, which is on Friday the 13th of December. Um, the formula, cha formula for change looks quite complicated but is very very simple. The D stands for dissatisfaction. How dissatisfied are you with your current situation? The V is about your vision, about your goals. Do you have a strong and a clear vision for what you want to become or what you want your business to become? You then have to take some first steps and all of that has to overcome the resistance you have to making that change. Let me give you an example. Um, Right, let's say you want to lose weight and get fit. So you decide that um, you're gonna get out of bed at half six on a summer's morning, um, and part of it is gonna go, you're gonna go for a walk and then a jog uh, to help you get fit. So first of all, you've gotta be dissatisfied with your current situation. So you've gotta be dissatisfied enough with your current fitness levels and your weight to want to do something about it. If you're not dissatisfied enough, then you're not going to do anything. And then you've got to have a strong enough vision of what, it, what, what the end result is going to be. You've got to see that you're going to be much more healthy. You're going to see that you're not going to run out of breath walking upstairs. You've got to see that you're going to be able to do that 10K run and be really, really good about it. You've got to have a strong vision because if, if, all, if you're dissatisfied with where you are now but you don't have a strong vision, then you're never going to really take, overcome the resistance to, to do what you need to do. Plus, you've got to take those first steps. So in our scenario of getting fit, you've got to be dissatisfied enough with your current situation. You've got to have that strong vision. The first steps are actually getting out of bed at half six in the morning, getting your shoes on, opening the curtain, seeing that lovely day and getting out there and going running. And you might do that for two or three days, but what happens on the fourth day when you open the curtains? And you just sort of slung one, one leg out of bed. You've opened the curtains and it's blowing a hoolie and it's chucking it down with rain and your bed's really warm and it's really comfortable. And it, you know it's going to be really uncomfortable outside. And then your resistance starts to kick in. The bed starts pulling you back in. The weather outside is really horrible. Do you have enough vision and are you in a, it's dissatisfied enough with your current situation to overcome that resistance? Or are you just going to slide back under the quilt and go back to sleep so one of the exercises you can do is to write this down on a piece of paper think about a particular challenge in your business or a particular goal that you want to achieve and mark out to 10 how dissatisfied you are at the current time with your situation and then mark out to 10 how strong a vision you have the first steps for you might be to come along to 90 day planning and to build a plan to help you move forward in your business. But all that's got to overcome the resistance that you have. So you've got to have a strong, you've got to be, you've got to be dissatisfied where you are now, you've got to have that strong vision and you've got to be prepared to take those first steps. Hope that makes sense to everybody. I want to talk a little bit about why people stay where they are. What do you think the difference is between a business owner in the same industry who's been around for the same amount of time who earns £50,000 profit and one who earns £250,000 profit. Just stick in the Q&A box what you think the main reason is why business owners, some in the same industry, will earn a pittance 
and others will do really, really well in the businesses and the businesses will fly away. Just put a little note in the Q&A section as to why you think that might be. Why do you think that might be? Come on, guys, this is all about 100% participation. So let's have something in the, uh, in the Q&A box. Why do you think some business owners do really well? And why do you think some business owners really struggle? Yep, somebody's put lack of drive and ambition. Yep, yep, they have a why. That's really important. Yep, that's, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Um, that's exactly what I was looking for. It's self-sabotage. Self-sabotage. The, they, they just don't do the right things. They like that focus and clarity to achieve their goals. Or they don't set goals. They're in, they're in that point below the point of power. They're in blame and excuses mode or denying that they've got any issues. So my question to you is, do you want to be flying in your business? Do you want to have focus and clarity? Which is what Growth Club will help you achieve. Or are you going to stay in that self-sabotage situation where you're blaming um, the world and his oyster for, for your troubles and making excuses for everything that's going on? So to keep moving forward and growing, ask yourself, what do you fear the most? And then I'd suggest you do it. Fear for us stands for false expectations of expectations appearing real. Most of the things that we do in business um, don't present any danger to us. But we have an inbuilt fear of doing things. Sometimes it'll be picking up the phone and making those difficult calls. Or going knocking on some doors. Whatever it is for you. But get out there and do it. Whatever your challenge, your biggest challenge is, get on and do it. And we can help with that, of course. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the identity iceberg. Now, uh, some of you may have seen this before. So if you look above the level of the surface of the water, you've got um, actions that we might take, the behaviours we exhibit. Sorry, that's an American spelling of behaviour. I must get rid of that. And the decisions that we make. And all of those three things result in the results that we get. So the actions we take, the decisions we make, the behaviours we exhibit, all give us the results that we get in life. I'm sure you'll all agree with that. But then there's a huge chunk of the iceberg that's below the surface. Or for us, all of these things are below the surface. People don't see these things. And the first thing is the skills that you have. Now, it may be to become a better business owner, you need to develop new skills. You know, whatever, uh, whatever profession you're in, Quite often you'll train for years in that profession, whether it's to become a travel agent, whether it's to become a, uh, uh, an independent financial advisor, whether it's to become an accountant, whether it's to become an architect. You train for years and years and years to, to get the technical knowledge um, and skill to do that job. How long do you train to be a business owner? For most people who go into business, it's nothing at all. None. Zilch. So think about what you need to do, what skills you need to pick up, the kind of person you need to become to become a better business owner. More deeply ingrained than that is your beliefs. Now, beliefs are things that we hold to be true at any one point in time. Beliefs can be changed. And quite often, business owners will have limiting beliefs that stop them doing the things that they want to do. And your beliefs will influence the decisions you make and the behaviors you exhibit but they can be changed so think about some of the limiting beliefs that you might have as a business owner or that other people have as a business owner so just for a second think about that and type something into the q a box type something into the q a box about what you think might be a limiting belief for a business owner Let's remember 100% participation. So what do you think might be a limiting belief as a business owner? 
I've already given you one or two. So one limiting belief is you can never find good salespeople. Another limiting belief might be there's never enough hours in the day. But we all get the same number of hours in the day, don't we? We all get 168 hours in every week. So why is it that some people manage to make better use of that 168 hours than others? So has anybody got any other limiting beliefs that they want to share with us? Yeah, limiting beliefs around time. Limiting beliefs around the economy. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. So think about the limiting beliefs that you might have and whether you can um, come up with a new belief that isn't quite so limiting. Look at back at that point of power. Look at blaming others. And making excuses and try and turn that around, flip that over. Even more deeply ingrained are our values. The values are... are, are Values are the things that you do when nobody's looking. So if you were walking down a road and somebody in front of you dropped a wad of notes and nobody was looking, would you pick it up and run the other way? Or would you pick it up and shout after them and, put, and, and give them back and put it in the pocket for them? Values are really deeply ingrained and they're really important in business as well because your clients, your suppliers and your staff need to share your values, your rules of the game, the standards by which you live. And those will obviously affect the decisions you make and the actions you take as well. And your identity as well. Do you identify as a business owner? When somebody asks you what you do, what do you tell them? So I quite often go to networking events and I meet a lot of trades people at these events. So I might go up to somebody and say, what do you do? And they might say, well, I'm a plumber. So they identify as a plumber, having tools in the hand and doing the plumbing work. If somebody comes up to me and, and says, I own a plumbing business, that's a really different identity. They own a business, they're a business owner. So how do you identify yourself? Do you identify yourself as a travel agent or do you identify yourself as owning a travel agency business? And all you other guys on the call, how do you identify yourselves? It's really interesting because that affects the behaviours we exhibit and ultimately the results that we get. And then finally, the environment that we're in. Can you imagine if the water around that iceberg changed in temperature by one degree? What do you think is going to happen to the iceberg? Yep. Right. <laughs> So three or four you've put in the box, so it's going to get smaller. Well, that's right. It could get smaller. It's interesting that nobody said it's going to get bigger because I said the, the temperature will change by one degree. I didn't say the whether it was going to go up or down, but every, with global warming nowadays, everybody expects the temperature to go up. So, uh, yeah, the, the iceberg is going to change in size, isn't it? And the environment that you're in will affect your behavior and the decisions you make, whether you're working from home or working from an office, how you dress. All those kind of things will affect your behaviours. So think about all those things in terms of being a business owner and how you can affect those and make a change. So in Growth Club, we'll review the last 90 days in your business. We'll look at what you, did, what you planned to achieve if you did have any plans. How much of that you did achieve? And what was the difference between the two? And what you can actually learn from the difference? So just very quickly in the, um, in the Q&A box, just put a little note in there about if you set a goal for the last 90 days in your business. So we've got a few people on the call. Just put in the Q&A box. Um, what that goal was. So let's have one or two of your goals. I'm not going to share them with, with anybody, uh, or certainly not share by name. Uh, we might have, uh, uh, we might share the individual goals, but we won't um, talk about the, the 
who said what. So tell me what your goals were. So somebody's put to finish particular projects. Somebody's put yes. Do you want to, whoever said yes, do you want to, you're anonymous, do you want to share what one of your goals was? Well, they haven't said no, but they haven't told me what the goal is yet. Let's have a look. Ah, to achieve a certain number of clients, that's good. And then somebody else has put not to leave any work for the next day, but it didn't happen. So what can you learn from setting goals, what you achieved and what you didn't achieve in the difference? And that's something that we talk about in Growth Club, analyzing the goals that you set, how structured those goals were, how good a plan you had in place to achieve those goals, and what stopped you achieving them. So we should always set SMART goals. Um, so SMART goals are this, just get your pad and a pen and write down um, the letters that make up the word SMART, S-M-A-R-T. So any goals that you set need to be specific, they need to be measurable. So it's got to be something you can measure, not airy-fairy, like more sales. It's got to be achievable. So don't set yourself a goal that's too far in the future. Um, don't set yourself a goal which you know is going to be absolutely unachievable. Um, the R, different people use the R in different ways. Some people would say uh, it's got to be results orientated. Um, I prefer to say you need to list the resources that you need to help you achieve that goal. And then it's got to be timed. One of the things we help you to do in Growth Club is to set SMART goals. If you're not setting SMART goals, think about how you can make them more specific, more measurable, and list the resources that you need and make sure they've got a time on them. The way we work in Growth Club is to sort you through our our uh, framework for achieving a commercial profitable business that can work without you. There's six levels in that. In Growth Club, we usually focus on the first three or four levels. The first level is mastery. That's about taking your business from chaos to control. It's about business basics. It's about doing the right things in your business. And those fall under four levels that we discuss and look at in Growth Club and look around where you can set goals. The first one is around destination that we've already talked about. What are your long-term goals? What are your 90-day goals? What is your business going to look like when it's finished? Do you have an organization chart for how your business is going to look when it's finished? We look at time management and what we can do to improve time management. And we talk about the difference between things in your business which are urgent and the things which are important and how you can become more structured in time management. We look at how to improve your delivery, how to make sure that your delivery is absolutely consistent and how easy is it is, it is, is it for you to do business or for people to do business with you. And we also look at the numbers, we look at finance, we look at gross profit, net profit, look at the difference, we look at your break even points, look at cash flow to see how good a cash flow forecast you've got in place and how good you are at maintaining your cash flow. The second level is around niche, it's about sales and marketing. It's about look at, looking at what differentiates your business and then looking at the five ways that we have of working with you to improve your business, taking small, making small changes and introducing new strategies in each of those five areas. And those five areas are quite simple. Those five areas are how to generate more leads for your business. We've got 83 different strategies we can share with you to help you improve your lead generation in your business. The second area is your conversion rate. Do you measure your conversion rate now? We've got another 80 odd strategies to help you convert more people into customers, more of those leads into customers. The next area we look at is how many times your customers transact with you in any given time period and how you can improve that. How do you get people to transact more often with you? 
And we've got another 60 odd strategies that we share with you in Growth Club that you can pick from to introduce one or two new strategies to help you get people to trade more often with you. The next area of those five ways that we look at is your average sale value. How do you increase your average sale value? Well, I can tell you the simplest method, that's to put your prices up. What we found is that when you put your prices up, 95% of your customers don't say a dicky bird. The 5% who do are the ones who complain about everything. But there are so many other areas that you can look at to help improve your average sale value, like add-on sales. The next area we look at is, and the final area of the five ways, is your gross profit margin. How can you improve your gross profit margin? Well, you can st if you're working on those other four areas, then it's going to have an impact anyway. But look at selling the things that make you more gross profit. Look at negotiating with suppliers for better deals. There's another 60, 70 odd strategies in gross profit to help you with that. There's 285 strategies across those five ways to help you as a business owner get more consistent cash flow, more predictable cash flow into your business and to have a real massive difference in your gross profit. The next area is around leverage. Leverage is about doing more with less. It's about saving yourself time, effort, and money. It's about systemizing your business. How can you save yourself time in your business? The first thing that you can look at, and this goes back to basic time management in mastery, is to do yourself a to-do list. How many of you do yourself a, an accurate to-do list at the end of every day for the following day? How many of you then categorize and prioritize that to-do list? So you're doing the most important tasks first, the tasks that are going to make you the most money you do first. Who procrastinates from time to time? So if you're procrastinating, what does it do? It stops you getting stuff done. So I put a box at the top of your to-do list and put the most difficult task of the day in that box so you get that done first. And then think about your business and think about the stuff that's urgent, but think about the stuff that's important in your business as well. And don't just spend all your time focusing on the day-to-day -day urgent stuff to keep your business running. Because if you do that, you'll never grow your business. You need to spend some time doing the important stuff, which is partly being on this webinar today, because you're taking time out of your business to learn. So think about the important stuff to your business. Read a book. Read a business book. Read a business book about something that you really want to learn more about, though. Don't just read any business book. Make sure it's one around what you need to learn about. And when you're thinking about your own time, focus on the tasks that make you the most money. And if you've got tasks which are 10 or 15 pound an hour tasks, then look at how you can then start moving those into other areas so other people can do those for you. And we talk more about that in Growth Club itself. But there's loads of great tools and strategies you can use to help with time management. If you're lucky enough to have a team around you already, then we'll cover some strategies for your team to make sure you have a, an amazing team that can then run the business for you. Synergy is about when you've got a well-oiled machine working, you've got a general manager in place, so you can then start to look at replicating the business. Do you open a new office? Do you franchise it? Do you sit back and just take the money that's coming out of it? And then that's when you start getting the results and you can start investing in other areas like investing in other businesses, investing in property and stocks and shares, that kind of thing. I'm going to talk quickly about making dreams come true. Uh, in one of the emails you received, we talked about uh, these four areas. We call them IVVMs, idealizing, visualizing, verbalizing, and then finally things will begin to materialize. And I'm going to briefly cover each of those. So idealization, when you are thinking about what you want out of your business and about a specific situation, it might be you're thinking about a major client that you want to try and win. It might be you're thinking about how you're going to spend your time over the next month. It might be about being a, a real great manager of time and getting everything done in the day. So think about the ideal situation that you want. 
and stretch your mind, stretch your mind to take into account all of the possibilities. Then focus on your ideal outcome. What do you really want out of it? So you're idealizing your, your, what is your ideal outcome? Make a choice then. Choose that that ideal outcome is already yours. And just remember that if you say, I want something, it means that you're focusing on what you haven't got rather than what you're choosing. And then you push it away because you're saying, I want this, but you haven't got it. It's what you haven't got. Once you've got an ideal outcome, then sit back and visualize it. There's a great book called The Morning Miracle. Uh, the Morning Miracle talks about this in really lots of detail. Uh, it's by a guy called Hal Elrod. Uh, who changed his life through doing this. Each morning he'd do this. So visualizing is about closing your eyes and visualizing the ideal outcome. But it's not just about having a picture. It's about imagining the feelings that you have if you already have it and believing that it's already yours. So if it's a particular situation, maybe you're in a, in a sales call with somebody and you're idealizing a, a really fantastic outcome for that sales call, then hear what's being said, feel the room, even smell what the room's like, but make it really vivid, really, really clear. And remember that your subconscious can't decide what's real and what's not. So if you keep planting the right seeds, you're more likely that your reticular activating system is going to help you along that path. The verbalizations are where people start to stutter sometimes with this, but if you start verbalizing some I am statements about yourself and your life as you choose it to be, then it, this works. You start to believe it and your reticular, reticular activating system starts to believe it as well. So you don't have to choose 20. It might be fewer than that. And if you're not absolutely sure that you are that person yet, then you can say, I am in the process of becoming that person. But be passionate about it. And the more often you do it, the better it works. I know people who do this, I do this, and it really, really makes a difference to me. And then once you've done that, the seeds that you plant in your mind will begin to grow and manifest. You'll get more energy. You'll bring more emotion to your goals. And just remember that you can only do what you are and you are what you think. So the more you visualize, the more you become that person. So we're now coming up to 10 to 1. Um, Growth Club on Friday, the 13th of December, we're going to talk about it a little bit. Uh, does anybody have any particular questions at this point in time about anything that we've covered so far uh, that we're going to be covering in obviously lots more detail in Growth Club? And who would like to walk away with a 90-day plan for the next 90 days in the business with some fantastic strategies to help them achieve very specific goals in the business that will undoubtedly help you move your business forwards. Is that something that any of the guys on the call want? Just stick a QA and a in the box. I've had one response so far, how about everybody else? Do you want to have a 90 day plan for your business? Do you want to be in with a group of like-minded business owners? We were really focused on achieving specific goals in the business with the help of the strategies and systems that we've got within, uh, within Action Coach. Well, let me, while you're thinking about that, let me tell you about what Growth Club is all about and what you get out of it. Uh, the next Growth Club's on Friday the 13th of December. As I've already said, we uh, start off the day by reviewing the last 90 days in your business. In this particular Growth Club, because it's in the fourth quarter, uh, we'll also be looking forward to the whole of 2020 
and looking at your goals for the whole of the next 12 months as well as the next 90 days. But you will walk out of it with a 90 day plan for your business that you can then stick up on the wall. You'll have a full 90 day plan with specific tasks and time scales in the form of a Gantt chart that you can then use to move your business forwards. You'll also receive in between growth clubs an accountability call to make sure that you're actually working on those tasks to achieve those goals. You'll have the benefit of working with a, a group of like-minded business owners in a peer-to-peer -peer environment. Um, you'll all be bouncing off, off one another. And we had some fantastic feedback from the last growth club that we had uh, back in September. And those people have, have skyrocketed forward with their businesses over the, last, uh, over the last eight weeks or so since we had that growth club. So we'll talk about every area of your business, all those six steps that we talked about, so we'll look at the business basics and any goals that you want to set there. You'll score yourselves in each of those areas to decide which areas are the most important for you to work on in terms of improving your business. We'll, look, we'll pay particular attention to sales and marketing and look at those 285 strategies that we've got across those five areas to help you set some specific goals to increase your profits in your business. And we'll look at how you can save time by implementing some new tools in your business and systemizing your business in certain ways to help you save time and create more time to do the things which are important to the growth of your business. So we've got a special offer for those who are on this particular webinar. Uh, next Growth Club's Friday the 13th of December, as I said, it's from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, and it's in Bolton. Um, growth Club is normally uh, £295, it's once a quarter, £295 plus fat. Uh, people who are regulars at Growth Club will tend to pay monthly, so they'll pay £100 a month each month towards Growth Club. Um, but normal investment is £295. But for anybody who wants to book now and has been on this workshop, uh, you can register now for just £95. So that's a saving of £200. Um, all you need to do is use this code. Um, I will put this into the box as well so you've got this code uh, when I can get my chat box to work so I'll give you that code again but it's quite simple it's bit bitly bit.ly forward slash acbgc that's action club Bolton growth club 419 so it's quarter 419 so acbgc 419 and then all you need to do is use our discount code which is GCW0819. So there's a section where you pay where it says, have you got a discount code? And you just enter that discount code, which is GCW0819. And that will give you that £200 discount. So we've got a few minutes left for Q&As. Who's got uh, any Q&As that they want to cover off just now? Who's got a question uh, that they'd like to pose just now? Just type it into the Q&A box, that'd be great. We'll give you a minute, I'll just dig up the, uh, the code that we need. Oops. Don't want to be seeing that, do you? Get rid of that. Okay, so somebody's asked if I can recommend any business books for starters. Um, so yes, I can. Um, I don't tend to recommend a business book in general terms, but do you have a specific challenge that you want to read and learn about? So if you have something specific in your business, because there are so many business books out there, there are so many different business books, some great books as well. I could give you a list as long as my arm. Um, we do have a business book club as well that meets once a month, if anybody's interested in coming along to that. Um, so, um, but if you can just type into the box, uh, specific challenges, business strategy planning. Uh, yes, let me have a quick think about that uh, for a minute and I'll come back to you with a recommendation on um, planning and strategy. Any other questions?
Any other questions? Just put them into, into that box now and we'll see if we can answer them. I know there's a few other people on the call. We aren't getting that 100% participation. Uh, can you just all confirm that you've got that link now in your chat box? Oh, so somebody's asked, is Growth Club suitable for any type of business model? Um, well, the simple answer to that, and I think you probably suspected you get this answer, is yes. Um, we work on strategies for business. Now, it doesn't matter which industry you're in as a business. Um, the strategies and systems work with every business. Some will be more applicable to certain businesses than others. Um, you know, we talked about those 83 lead generation strategies. Now, not all 83 of them will work in every single business. But we can certainly find a few that will work in your particular business. So, and that applies across the whole, the whole uh, framework that we have. So businesses uh, follows the same framework for every business. So yes, the answer is it will work in every situation. Um, the more important thing is um, what your particular challenges are at the time. So whether your you know whatever your challenge is, then growth we can find um, systems and strategies and help you to set goals that will help you with those particular challenges in your business. So for the person who asked that question, does that answer your question? Uh, I'm just going to put that link in the chat box again. Um, for, I've had a couple of people who said they've not got that link yet. And I'll send it in the Q&A box to the person. I'll put it in the Q&A box as well. Oh, thank you. You said it's a good answer. So that's great. So, uh, right, let's have a look. So there's some great books out there for business planning. Uh, I'm going to recommend a couple to you. There's a great book that's been released by a fellow coach of mine called Business Shouldn't Be This Tough. Uh, so it's called Business Shouldn't Be This Tough, and it's by a chap called Steve Gaskell, G-A-S-K-E-L-L. I'm just looking for some other great books here as well. Uh, there's a series of, of fabulous books um, by uh, a chap called Brad Sugars, who founded Action Coach. Um, one of his favourite, well, one of my favourite books is a book that's uh, been at the top of the uh, uh, Amazon bestsellers list, uh, which is Pulling Profits. Uh, so that's a great book about um, business in general and looking at the different aspects of, of business and what you need to do in your business. Um, but if you're looking at um, strategic planning, it depends in what area you're looking at. If it's looking around goal setting and things like that, then there are different books um, to, to other areas of strategic planning, if that makes sense. So if you want to drop me an email afterwards, um, and give me a little bit more detail about what you help, 
what help you need in terms of planning, then I'll make some other recommendations for you. But hopefully those two, pulling profits and, and the business shouldn't be this tough, will help you in some way. Um, I will make another couple of recommendations to you. I think I know who it was who, uh, who asked that question. So um, I will, um, if you want to drop me a quick email afterwards, I'll make some other recommendations for you. So that's our lot. It's now two o'clock. If there are no other questions, um, I'm going to say thank you very much. Leave you um, with a quote from Bob Nardelli, who is the CEO of Home Depot in the States, um, who said, I absolutely believe that people in less coach never reach their maximum capabilities. Um, another good friend of mine once said, your business will only rise to the level of your incompetency. So think about the person you need to be and the person you need to become in order to get the very best out of your business. And if you feel that um, you'd like to sit, take some time out of your business to do some 90 day planning, then come along to Growth Club. Thank you very much for your time. And the only thing it leaves with me to say is, now it's time to get into action. So whatever you do, whether you come to Growth Club or not, make sure you set yourself some specific goals. And then get yourself moving and do something. I'll leave this on the screen for a little while. And uh, if anybody's got any questions, then feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, my name has been Paul Lim uh, from Action Coach Bolton. Thank you very much for joining us for an hour on this webinar. I hope you've learned something. Uh, if you have any questions afterwards, please feel free to give me a call or drop me a line. Thank you very much.